Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about the eight tips I've come up with when you move to save you time and or money. So, stay tuned. Tiffany Gudger here with Tiffany Gudger Real Estate right here in Nashville, Tennessee. If this is your first time to our channel and you want to know everything about living and moving to Nashville in the Middle Tennessee area, make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe and click that little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. I get people reaching out to us all the time that are moving here and we love it. We love helping people relocate to Nashville. So uh, give us a call, shoot us a text, an email, however you want to get a hold of us. We've got your back when moving to the Nashville and Middle Tennessee areas. So moving on, let's talk about eight tips to save you time and or money when moving to this area. Number one is going to be furniture. So moving furniture can be very, very expensive. And who knows if when you get here, it'll even fit or um, if it looks good in the new place. Now, we can get you a layout with measurements of the house so that you know if your furniture will fit, which is super, super helpful. Um, and you're gonna wanna only keep what you have to. Again, moving furniture is, uh, or relocating with furniture is expensive. It's expensive to ship, and the more furniture you have, the more your movers cost and all that kind of stuff. Um, so again, let's just make sure that you only bring what you have to. And if there is anything that won't fit, we go ahead and get rid of it. Now, if you're wanting to move here and kind of start all over and um, build from the ground up with your furniture and your decor, but you don't want to be rushed into it when you get here, I have a company that I have a great relationship with that I can refer you to uh, named, or they're called Court. And uh, they actually will lease furniture. So when you get here, you can rent some furniture until you figure out what you want to buy because there's nothing like paying to move furniture uh, to another location just to sell it when you get here. Um, so again, that can save you money um, just by making sure you only bring what you have to as far as your furniture and your big stuff. Tip number two has to do with moving supplies. So boxes and packing paper and peanuts and all that kind of stuff can be very expensive. So I've got an idea for you. Um, I would recommend getting on the next door app or Facebook Marketplace, or go to Costco or Walmart to get your boxes. Um, a lot of times people that have just moved uh, just want to get rid of their boxes and you can get them for pretty inexpensive or um, for free sometimes. So check out those places. And again, Walmart has expense, inexpensive boxes. Um, the liquor store is always getting rid of stuff in your other grocery stores. Figure out when they get their shipments in and just go uh, around and ask them if they can have, if you can have their boxes when they're done uh, bringing stuff in. So free boxes is definitely the way to go. Um, again, you can probably get quite a few from inexpensive. And, and look around your neighborhood, the neighborhood that you're gonna be moving out of. Did somebody just move into that neighborhood? Cause if so, I would just go to them and ask them if they have any boxes that you could have. Cause they're probably just gonna wanna unpack and get rid of them. So uh, moving expenses or moving uh, equipment and, and boxes and stuff can get expensive so those are just a couple ways that you can try to uh, make that a little cheaper. Tip number three is actually going to cost you a little money but it is to hire movers. Uh, so while this may cost you a little bit of money it could save you some in the event of if you break things or you get injured moving heavy stuff like I like to do. Uh, I'm just kind of accident prone and uh, last time I moved of course I ended up getting hurt. <laughs> um, but yeah so Higher movers, it will make your stress levels a lot, lot lower, um, and it just makes things altogether easier. And you could save money because they do this for a living, so they know how to play Tetris with those boxes and that stuff, and they could fit even more uh, into a truck than you probably could. So you could save money with having less trucks to haul your stuff. Um, so yep, tip number three, save yourself some headache uh, and hire some movers. Tip number four has to do with when you get here. So let's say you've already sold your uh, home uh, in the state that you are moving from and you have a couple weeks where you don't know what to do. Well, Airbnbs here um, sometimes offer discounted rates for extended uh, stays. So instead of doing an extended stay hotel or just 
renting this Airbnb for a couple of days or that Airbnb for a couple of days. If you stay at the same place, uh, they could offer you a discount for uh, a couple of weeks or a month. So say you sell your house and you move here and you want to find a house when you get here, an Airbnb uh, for a month or two might be the way to go. And again, the rates are a lot lower than if you just did a day-to-day -day kind of rental. Tip number five uh, has to do with daycares and start looking as soon as possible. Uh, a lot of clients I have that move here will look at schools and location to work and that kind of stuff, but they just forget about daycares. And if you don't get signed up early, um, daycares around here go really quickly and fill up really quickly. So you might be stuck at the last minute uh, paying more than you thought for daycare just to get in somewhere. Um, there's another agent that I work with that actually moved to another state where they have the same issue with daycares and he didn't even think about uh, the daycare aspect and by the time they got there and tried to get their kids into one, they ended up paying like double what they thought they were gonna have to. So, when you come here or when you know you're gonna come here, start looking at daycares immediately and again, I can be a resource for you and give you some materials to uh, look at and some other resources for you to check out. Um, but tip number five is go ahead and get those daycares locked down. Tip number six may seem kind of obvious, but it is to downsize. Even if you're gonna be moving to a larger home, get rid of the things that you know you're not gonna need because there's nothing worse than paying to have things moved, like I mentioned before, uh, that you're just gonna throw out when you get here. Um, a lot of times it's easier and less expensive and definitely um, less of a headache sometimes to uh, go ahead, have a yard sale, uh, donate things to Goodwill, um, your local homeless shelters and things like that that you're not going to use. If you haven't used it at your current house, you're probably not going to use it at your new one. So just go ahead and get rid of it. Don't pay to move it just to bring it here and have it sit. Um, I've had a lot of people who don't even think about this. They just pack up everything that they've got. And when I talk to them about uh, getting rid of, you know, certain things, their moving expenses cut in half or um, it's just less that they have to pay to box up and that kind of stuff. And then they get here and they get excited about um, not having a ton to unpack and just being able to settle in. So the next tip, which might seem kind of obvious, but you'd be surprised the number of people that don't think about it is to go ahead, downsize a little bit, get rid of all that junk you don't use now. You're not going to need it here. Most likely tip number seven has to do with your appliances. So kind of like furniture, they're big, bulky, hard to move. Um, and so we kind of want to talk a little bit about what it's like to bring your own versus if there's some here or buying when you get here. Um, here in Tennessee, typically the uh, if it's a built-in microwave or um, ranges and stoves and ovens and all that kind of stuff is included. Sometimes refrigerators are, sometimes uh, sellers will leave their washers and dryers. Um, so just get with me and we'll talk about what's uh, typical and standard here or what a certain house might be offering because if you don't have to bring those appliances that will save you uh, money in shipping and uh, stress in uh, trying to make sure they fit which we can always get your measurements should you just absolutely love the current refrigerator you have or you absolutely love your stove just let us know and we will get you some measurements uh, to see if it will fit um, I will say I have a funny story about a refrigerator it wasn't funny at the time but we decided to move a refrigerator um, by ourselves. Um, we got a new one for the garage and um, we don't know anything about moving refrigerators apparently. And this is years and years ago when I first moved to Nashville. And uh, we uh, laid it down in the bed of my boyfriend's truck, got here, set it up, plugged it in, didn't work. We had no idea that you couldn't lay a refrigerator on its side or tilt it back. Oil will get in, um, the cooling coils and it could eventually stop working or not work at all when you plug it in or have trouble cooling all this stuff that we don't know because I am not an expert in refrigerators um, but I've learned a lot over the years um, so it's just easier to have someone else do it number one and number two if you don't need to bring it just uh, see if the seller will leave it or get you when you can get here um, we bought a whole bunch of appliances as a pack from Lowe's and I got the Lowe's credit card did the whole nine yards and saved a bunch of money on it, was able to pay it off um, with 0% interest. And because we bought everything as just a big bundle for the whole kitchen, um, again, we saved a bunch of money. So that might be an option also. Um, so again, number seven appliances, don't bring them if you're not gonna need them or um, if you're just gonna replace them when you get here anyway.
And my final tip to save you time and money is to, of course, reach out to us. So we're professionals at doing this. Um, I'm basically a matchmaker between you and your next dream home. I want you to love it a year, two years, five years, 10 years, however long you're planning on staying there. I want you to love it that far down the road. Um, because if we just rush in and we don't do it right and a year from now you decide you don't love where you're at and you wanna sell it, um, it's gonna cost you a little bit of money. So we want to make sure that you love where you're at. Um, we can go through all the different processes and things like that to make sure that you're saving money where you can um, and doing things in the most time efficient and uh, stress-free ways. Again, I'm basically a professional at this. I kind of do it for a living. So uh, reach out to us, we'd love to help. Uh, and again, these are my tips for saving time and money when moving to Nashville and Middle Tennessee. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below or reach out to us. We would love to help, but you have to reach out. So give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, however you want to get a hold of us. We've got your back when you move here. And until the next video, guys, we'll catch you later.